Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Voices from the Mausoleum, and welcome to another episode of Horror Games in Real Life with my co-host, Kat Valor. Hello! Welcome. Thanks for coming back. Uh, thanks for caring about my well-being as I play dumb ghost games. <laughs> <laughs> the series where cat plays games so you don't have to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh oh. if you're not there's a playlist for these so if you're interested in some of the other ones we've already covered we're first episode covered a few of them and then the last one we did was elevator game so what are we talking about today today we're talking about 11 miles which is uh, one of uh, it's one of the ones that I was most excited to cover because it is not a lot of these are like urban legends and parlor right. games and right. that that have been circling around for a while. Eleven Miles, I'm not sure was ever intended to be treated like a real game. Um, like okay. this was very clearly a piece of fiction. Uh, that people were ah. like, I could try this. <laughs> oh, um, okay. I, yeah, I don't know anything about this one, but I do think it's one of the like a, and. In retrospect, we're going to talk about this, uh, about, like, why it was so scary to play. This was one of the, like, most scared, like, that. this this was about as scared as I've ever been playing one of these games. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, there's kind of a jump, I think, in between Elevator Game and 11 Miles, because here's where, like, the spooky shit kind of, like, this was where it felt like it started for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but starting in, uh, so 11 Miles was a creepypasta. Um, oh. I don't believe it was ever credited. I don't think, because like some of the, oh no, uh, Emery did it, I think. It, this was like one of those old school creepypastas. It was um, on the like front wave of the ritual pastas, uh, right. which is where we get into a lot of the weird shit that I, I did or tried to do. Right, uh, okay. Came, came from those and a lot of them are written like instructions uh which started right around the 11 miles time oh. um this is one of the more speculative ones like you can tell from the style of writing and the kind of like second person style that this was supposed to be read as like a scary story and okay um yeah. it got circulated a lot with like the creepypasta narrators craze yeah. that was happening in like uh 2015 2016 okay uh, right around there yeah but i but i've played it. <laughs> like you can play it if you want um and it is one of the and something we'll get into with this show is just that like the ambiance of some of these games is a scary situation yeah in and of itself sure um which i think is what this one has going for it if you choose to treat it like an actual game yeah uh, but uh, let's get into the rules, and then we'll yeah. talk about uh, the nonsense that I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one, I think, is really interesting because 11 Miles, unlike a lot of these, where the incentive... I think all of the ones we've talked about so far, the incentive has pretty much just been like, if you follow these instructions, something scary will happen and you'll see a yeah. ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. 11 miles bribes you, which I think is a really interesting like aspect to this. It's like okay. if you do this, you could die from the ghost or you could get whatever one thing it is you desire most. So ah, it's like a high okay. risk, high reward. That's different. Yeah. You know. Okay. Uh which I like. So uh, essentially yeah. what you do is you uh, this is a driving game uh you drive to um a ghost road and there are signs for how to look for the road but you you figure out what it is you want you set that intention in your mind um you look for specific signs that are related to the object that you desire you're supposed to play this at night whenever oh. you think that roads in your area are going to be the least traffic heavy um okay. and you you look for these signs and then there's a list of instructions for what happens when you find this road okay. um it is an unmarked road uh somewhere in your area you can access the road allegedly from wherever you're at and each m mile that you go through you are tested in a different way to see if you are worthy of whatever it is you've asked for so okay. um 
now uh, and then and the uh the sort of tests escalate mm -hmm. um the first mile and again i have my little cheat sheet up uh yeah. The first mile, it's supposed to get really cold. Um, the second mile, if you haven't already turned your heater on, you're going to want to. The third mile, uh, you start to see silhouettes uh, in the trees, and you are to absolutely keep your eyes on the road, not on the trees. Uh, on the fourth mile, you start to hear voices. The fifth mile, uh, the trees vanish, and there's the appearance of a lake. You have to not look at the lake. Uh, the sixth mile uh, takes into account that you are halfway done. Um, the stars and will start to disappear. The sky is going to go black. Uh, any like sign that you have of the trees and the, the clearing of the lake, it, it's all going to vanish and you're going to be just seeing the road. Uh, the radio turns on automatically. You start to have your greatest fears broadcasted. Uh, on the seventh mile, you start to hear voices again. The voices are now coming from the back seat and not from the silhouettes. You are not to turn around under any circumstances. On the eighth mile, you slow down, but do not stop. Uh, your headlights will flicker. It will continue to get colder. You have to ignore anything you see or hear other than the road. On the ninth mile, your vehicle will stall temporarily. You have to close your eyes while restarting the vehicle. No matter what, you cannot open your eyes until the vehicle is working again. Um, on the 10th mile, all of the voices are supposed to stop. Um, you're supposed to have a little reprieve, and the voice from the back of your car is supposed to tell you uh, whether or not, you know, uh, they're going to congratulate you for getting this far and remind you that you're probably going to die. On the 11th mile, in your 11th mile, uh, this is where all of the, like, really scary stuff is supposed to happen. Your vehicle is supposed to lose power. Uh, you're just supposed to put it in neutral and continue forward as best you can. If you see a red light, you close your eyes. You can cover them. You cover your ears. You are, at this point, supposed to be able to hear what hell sounds like. Uh, and you have to endure it until your car uh, comes back on. You keep driving uh, until you reach a dead end. Uh, you, at this point, you have to just close your eyes no matter what happens. Uh, the beings are going to try and trick you. Uh, you, at this point, just have to imagine your deepest desire. You have to remember what you came here for and wait for it ma to materialize. When the noises stop, uh, you can put your car, you can turn your car back on, you can turn around, you can leave the road, you're instantly supposed to be back at the like beginning of the road that you were on before, and uh, whatever you have asked for, essentially, is going to be in the car with you. Um, obviously, if this worked, people would know about it, like this is an insane high risk, high reward kind of right. uh, situation um and and obviously this did not work for me i am not currently married to tom DeLong. uh <laughs> we would have noticed but <laughs> uh this is one of the scariest experiences i've ever had uh playing a creepypasta like game because a lot of these a lot of the early steps to this basically just describe what it's like driving in ohio I'm, like... <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I have these roads that I take to get to my parents' old house and because I'm from a small town. I live in a city now, but I, I, I'm from a small town in Georgia. And when you got to, I think you said the third miles when you start seeing silhouettes, I'm like, that's literally me every time I'm driving at night by myself. Like I'm always yeah. seeing and hearing shit, waiting on something to dart across the road. I'm always on edge because it's such a spooky time. And I also have to comment on this because you got like all the way to like, I think you said like nine or I can't remember. It was like one of the last ones. And you're like, and this is when it gets scary. And I was like, this is what, <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> and you get to nine and it's scary. <laughs> it got to scary at two or three or the, like one of the. <laughs> I have to go find this creepypasta. I want to read it. I have not read it's, this. It's super well written. Um, And it, it pretty much is just like the, um, set of instructions but it's like so yeah. well written yeah. um that you can tell that it's fiction a lot of the instructions are like they read 
pretty much like instructions where they're kind of boring and clinical and yeah you know, the the fear is that someone would hypothetically play them 11 miles reads like a short story in a way that i thought was really satisfying it's still one of my favorite like yeah. ritual pastas i think in terms of fiction yeah. yeah i'm surprised that hasn't been turned into anything me too um because i mean creepy pastas are like there's all kinds of shit about crazy creepy pastas I mean, they did that stair one, which was so good. I loved that one. The one where you find the oh, stairs in the woods. Yeah. Um, which is, oof. uh, that, that, those creepypastas are good. There's a bunch of those though. It's not just one. Um, but I'm surprised that it didn't get turned into something after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, it, cause that was one, I think maybe just because it's like so short, yeah, Maybe you can make that into an hour and a half, though I think. But I, I would, I would watch it. Um, I, shit, me too. The ambiance is like really scary for this one, and yeah, yeah, it's it's a very. So I played. I I know that I was sixteen when I played this one because I had like just gotten my license, and I was like, what a better way to celebrate than. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna drive out here um it was before like because there was there was like that huge uh like mid 2010 surge of these um this one had kind of come out before that curve and it was like I, I, and i found it because i was just on the creepypasta website all the time yeah like, i mean i went through that too yeah <laughs> no i went through that too yeah and it was, uh, yeah, so I was really excited to play this one. And it was, uh, it was scary. Uh, first of all, because I, I was not real confident as a driver to begin oh. with. And then also just like, and it was really scary because, and a lot of this, it's one of the reasons why I did want to talk about this one so much. Mm -hmm. uh, because these, again, there are themes that are going to carry through with these series. Like, if you take these games even a little bit seriously uh even a little bit where it's yeah. like and for me it wasn't even the like i'm i'm going to like focus on getting my goal it was more of like uh can i survive like at mile nine like <laughs> just like in my car listening to the hellscape yeah. you know like is that gonna be so and, and just even with that mindset where it's like will i be able to do this it's there's that tension and and that like anticipation of what you're getting yourself into i think yeah. makes a lot of these games a lot scarier to play than sure. like um it, <laughs> and it's like it was really scary because you're you know driving around looking for the road and i like i was i had convinced myself that I had found the road um, a little bit because it's like, it's one of those things. This was one of the more far-fetched ones. So I, yeah. I got in the mindset. It was kind of hard because you're doing a ghost game that you're pretty sure is fiction, but then you have to get yourself in the mindset of like, I'm yeah. ready if it's not like, I'm yeah, scared I to that. do this. And uh, were you like, like when you were 16, like as far as how you look at these things, is it the same as like how you look at those things now? Or were you oh in a no. I like, I have a lot more respect, I think, for <laughs> stuff now. Okay, um, I got you. Yeah. Like, at which, I, it's why we started <laughs> doing these series. It's why I quit playing ghost games because it's like, because I do now look at these with the mindset of like, we don't really know what's out there. and. If for what, as improbable as it is, if this one game is the thing that breaks us through to the other side to something else, they're probably irritated as shit with us for yeah. constantly doing it. <laughs> like, I don't... Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's more my attitude now. I, like, yeah. when I was 16, I just wanted to see a ghost still. I got I was, you. Okay. <laughs> I was just curious. I was curious what, if there was a difference or, because I oh, didn't absolutely. realize you were 16 when you did this one, because obviously we didn't talk about them. We were saving it for the show. And so I didn't realize that you were so young. Not that you're not young, because I think you're, you're younger than me. So we're, we're all, we're both young. We're um, young. <laughs> but the, uh, but I just didn't realize it was, you know, 16 when yeah. you did this one so i was just curious kind of what the mindset was then versus now yeah no i i was i was 16 <laughs> i might have been pretty close to 17 because i think i might have sure. waited until it was summer the one thing this is so dumb um but this is how my mind worked then and now where it's like if it's gonna get cold 
I would rather it be a cold spell in the summer than like a colder than winter. Than worse than winter. <laughs> so like I think I, I I was probably like I think I had waited after um like there there were a few months in there where I was like I'll wait for it to get warm and then I'm gonna go play this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I was but yeah like sixteen almost seventeen and I I just wanted to see like what was going on you know I I wanted to I, yeah. I, my dream at that time i think what i wanted more than I, what what i wanted more than any of the things that like i could think of to wish for because that was the one thing is it was like it had to be something that you were willing to go through all of this for and i i had like a list of like six things and it's like i don't even know which of these things i want the most i want to see this place like i want one of right. these games to be <clears throat> successful and that was definitely my motivation for it more than i think i i can make a lot of jokes um about it being tom DeLong because that was that was what i was obsessed with when i was in high school uh i i think it might have been money i think i had gone like the i want to be like really successful and you know yeah because that's what i was gonna say. it sounds like it has to be something tangible though if it's supposed to end up in the car with you um there is kind of a caveat to that i think that oh. they throw in where it's like um th they have different signs because a lot of people i guess do this uh or are supposed to be enticed to this by like uh, a relationship at which point you start okay. seeing like rose petals instead of like mm -hmm. the money signs and they have like different things that you follow um but then yeah. if you make it to the end mm -hmm. uh let me there's like there's a non-tangible clause where like if it's not an object that you've wanted uh you notice the effects follow like into your life afterward um yeah, yeah. but yeah so I, but anyway, yeah, there's, there is kind of like a clause for that, but I was like, but for me, it really was, it was like, I wanted to be scared. I, yeah. I wanted to have this experience. I really just wanted one of these games to work for me. And it was like, I had really, I hyped myself up into thinking that because it's like, because a lot of the signs, they're very subtle that you're supposed to look for and going the mm -hmm. money route. It was like, you know, it, it was stuff like you're supposed to notice like glittering in the trees and, you know, you're supposed to know which way to turn based off of like road sign cues and stuff. And it's like, you, you can kind of like trick yourself into believing that it's happening and then you find and this I, this isn't a scary like creepy supernatural thing it's just a thing in ohio where it's like you're you're looking for this mysterious unmarked dirt road and there are a lot of those here <laughs> you know so but then which you know it's easy here safe in my office to be like i ah uh, yes silly dirt roads they're everywhere but like when you start <laughs> seeing glittering and you're like is that glittering you know and then you like turn on to like wealth avenue or whatever oh, sure. or like uh and, and you think that you like might be doing it and then you find a road that's like the road that you've been looking for and you like pull your car onto it and you're like this is it like i am here yeah. and then you know it talks about and then it like the first couple things you're like the temperature is supposed to drop and mm -hmm. it's like it's always cold <laughs> at night in ohio like yeah. and i was spooked you know so like i've got goosebumps and it's you know i'm now aware of how cold it is you know and I yeah was, i think i made it about three miles before i was like i i'm this is me i'm doing this to myself <laughs> like this is <laughs> right yeah um but I did. I kind of bought into it for like the first two miles. I was like, there's mm -hmm. a chance <laughs> that I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get prepared for the sounds of hell, but I'm gonna be rich <laughs> when I get to the other side. <laughs> And then there is like, there's also that part of my brain. I do re distinctly remember having this thought. I remember being like scared and nervous and like, there's mm -hmm. a chance I'll swerve off the road when I get to hell. And like, these yeah. are the kinds of thoughts that are going through my brain. But then there was a teeny tiny part of me that was like, I should have asked to marry Tom Delong. <laughs> like, I, I remember so specifically having that thought where it's like, if this is real, I asked for such a dumb thing. <laughs> like... <laughs> If anyone can get money. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't even know what I would. Have, I don't even know what I would have asked for at sixteen. Yeah. 
I don't even know. Well, you know what? I wasn't I wasn't driving though. It's like not like that until I was 18. I don't know. Freedom probably for my parents. That's probably what I would have asked for. <laughs> I wouldn't have known. I would have been I don't know. Now I would 100% ask for money. Like I could do so much with money. Like I could I could do so many projects. I could do so many like I could do so much with that. That would turn into fulfillment in other ways, you know what I mean? So yeah. I would 100% pick that now. I uh I think I would also I would probably also pick money. Yeah. I, I like again, but seriously this time because now I have a better concept of like what money can do. At the time, God, yeah. it was like I'll yeah. play this ghost game for the fun of like messing around with ghosts and if I get a bunch of money that would be cool. And now I'd right. be like I would maybe risk my life for this much money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, yeah. yeah, that's the big difference between like 16 year old cat and <laughs> current yeah. cat. It's like, yeah, that was a smart thing to ask for, but for the wrong reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's 100% what I would ask for. I did this like, this is like a quick side tangent. I don't know if you've ever seen these on TikTok or Instagram, but there's these these cheat codes for life that people say, like, if you use these codes in real life, it will manifest these different things. Yeah. And so I was like, what could it hurt <laughs> to do this? Because it sounds stupid. It's probably bullshit. But if, but what if it isn't? What if it's not? I sometimes I'm just saying totally buy into the like we are in a simulation thing. So I was like, it yeah. could be cheat code. I mean, I use cheat codes in Sims, so surely. So, but like I did. So there's a cheat code for money. I'm not. This is a true story. There's a cheat code for money, and you have to manifest it by speaking it or writing it over and over and over throughout the day as you know, you're trying to get it and you just rewrite the number. So I wrote the number in the air multiple times. I said it out loud multiple times. I wrote it in bubbles, like from my shower, like on the shower wall. Cause that was like one of the suggestions. And I just did that for like three days. And then randomly we got a check from our escrow account for like five grand because we had overpaid our escrow. Oh, wow. And it was like right after that. And I'm like, I am saving this code. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure it was just a weird coincidence because I think it was right around the time we were getting ready to sell the house. And I think it was just like a, it was a, it was a shift in who was taking over or who was running the, or was over our mortgage account. And that's yeah. really all it was, was they caught it. But the timing on it was like, this could be real. Cheat and code. That's <laughs> the thing is like, you just don't know for sure. Know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, and yeah. Yeah. It's something I get into with like, uh, there's the uh oh god i'm i'm going off on another philosophy rant everyone's rolling their <laughs> eyes already but there is there's pascal's wager which is like it makes sense to be a christian not because i believe in christianity but because there are harsh punishments in christianity for not believing in it uh and there's no repercussions if this is false <laughs> and it's like i i I'm not a Christian. I, I don't believe like in that when it comes to religion, but like there are yeah. a bunch of things that I do kind of approach with that attitude where it's I don't, like, no, I totally get what you're saying though. Like yeah. what's the worst that's going to happen to me? I'm going to look like an idiot for doing this, but I'd also look like an idiot if it were real and I didn't do it. And you so. didn't do it. Yeah. Cause you don't know. And that's the thing. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, no, that's, that makes perfect sense. That was me with the cheat codes. I was like, this is the dumbest shit. Let me save this number. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to do it and see. And then I like lost my mind when we got the check for the escrow. I was like, <gasps> you know, because like you buy into it and then you have to remind yourself that like, eh, it's probably just a coincidence. But anyway, I need to find the code again because <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just in case if it happens again, I'm just saying, yeah. I don't know. But anyway. That that were and that's the that's the kind of one that it's like safe to do. It like you don't even have to go to a hell dimension for that. You can just like Yeah, you don't have to have whispering behind you in your back seat or you know, which I already have issues with back seats. I always check my back seats after seeing Urban Legends. Yeah. <laughs> no yes. Thanks. That was no the thing. so that was like one of my first that was a fundamental uh that movie changed my brain chemistry kind of moment because yeah. I do get really paranoid about stuff in my back seat now. Um, yeah. And it was like that. Cause I watched the movie before I had any kind of like, before I was even close to having a license and it's yeah. like, and I still like, I have to check for that kind of stuff. And it, 
that was one of the so the miles that like freaked me out was like three when it gets too cold because i don't do well in cold and i was like that's yeah. gonna be unpleasant uh having something in my back seat that i wasn't allowed to look at like really freaked me out mm -hmm. and then the like the sounds of hell uh as mm -hmm. my car stopped because it's like what if the car and this is <laughs> my irrational fear i was like what if the car really does stop and i have to like check the engine and but then i have to get out of the car and like the one rule of the game is you cannot leave the you vehicle. can't get out of the like, car yeah what if my so how many miles car did you get? i made it like three miles well actually that's not entirely true i made it a lot further than three miles because the road was the road that i found myself on was skinny enough that i was like i wasn't turning around i was pretty much on that road <laughs> <laughs> like it went somewhere but i figured it out at the three mile mark and then i think it was like i was on the road uh i think for about another 12 miles after that like i was there for kind of a hot second just stuck on the road and then like i ended up I, this was also like an unintended really just scary thing that happened because i got off the road finally yeah and realized that i i had no idea like where i was uh my gps wasn't so good at the time and i have no sense of direction uh and i got out into like <laughs> gotta love ohio because it had been like this <laughs> it had been like this really spooky like ambient forest experience like out uh -huh. in the wilderness where i was convincing myself i was in hell i got off the road and was immediately deposited into like what i can best describe as like a dystopian factory setting and i was like am i in hell <laughs> like what are the chances that i just like missed all 11 miles and just drove right into hell, right into hell. <laughs> Because I had no idea, like, what this was. And then the thing that really freaked me out, and this is how all of my driving in Ohio stories end. Uh, this was probably the first time it ever happened to me. First or second time, maybe, it ever happened to me. Um, I was, like, super lost. Uh, this, my phone was not getting any kind of internet connection at the time. I had, like, one of those dumbass brick flip phone oh, yeah. style. Yeah. Like, it wasn't getting anything. I didn't have GPS. I was, like, I fucked up um i should not have been doing this in the first place i don't know where i'm at i drove around because i was like eventually i'm just going to the sun is going to come up and i'm going to just have to admit defeat at a gas station and ask for directions is gonna be and then my parents are gonna be mad and they're gonna be like what happened and i'm gonna be like i got lost like 15 <laughs> minutes away from the house um i was like and i was all stressed about this i took a right and i ended up there's this spooky ass road like in ohio it's bath road that just it seems to run through the entire state it's like it's on the same it's where jeffrey dahmer's house is and it's like so you always kind of like notice when you pass by because that's like the first thing i ever learned about this road and it runs through the whole state it's so long and i was like oh god damn it but that was how i ended up finding my way home because it's like once i get to bath road i know i can pretty much just follow it to like oh my god pretty much right around the corner from me but <laughs> it's like oh God damn it! I'm gonna have to pass by the Dahmer house on my way home again. <laughs> You're already like, oh no, <laughs> no. Yeah. That's yeah. I I get spooked driving at night now as an adult. Like I don't like it. It's Spooky. like interstates are fine, but if I'm on a road where it's like more like suburbs or more like rural type, you know, like it's spooky. Like there's it's scary. I like. There's um the road that you go down to get to my parents. Oh, they don't live there anymore. But the way I used to go when I would come from where I live now to go visit, it's like got those those trees that shape almost like a tunnel over the road, you know? And yeah. there's like for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, there's like all these abandoned, like falling apart houses on this road. And so it's cool. It looks super cool during the day because you're like, oh, I would love to go there. And at night you're like, don't look at it, don't look at it, don't look at it, don't look at it. Um which is it's and it's very it's very unsettling because you're just like oh god like and I, I don't know there's other there's other horror movies and stuff where they've had things that show up in the back seat unexplained like unexplained or I mean unexpectedly or you know it's like 
yeah, driving is, I, I didn't know this one. I didn't know. I couldn't remember what it was called, but I knew it was 11 something. And then when you said it, I was like, this is a driving one. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, it, and it's, it's spooky and yeah. Abandoned roads are, they're so atmospheric during the day. And then at night you're like, I don't know that I should be here. <laughs> Like, I should have just taken the long way around. This was not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they lived out sort of like in the country. So it was like very like, there's no cars on the road. There's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it, yeah, it was very not fun at nighttime. Very spooky. Yeah. I remember um because my grandparents had a farm uh mm -hmm. and it was like driving out, the, <laughs> driving out through the farmlands of Ohio. It's like, oh boy. <laughs> I don't know about this one. This I can not... only imagine. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. And you're just like, and it's you. And then there's just like miles and miles of corn on other, either <laughs> side. And you're like, this is maybe worse than the abandoned city. Like, I just gotta oh, get out God. of here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Rhodes. And my partner and has kind of like the opposite of that. Like, he's mm -hmm. very easily spooked by stuff ex mm -hmm. but he really likes like abandoned places yeah. uh there's like an abandoned train track uh that's been closed off that's like right by his house and he's like always wanting to walk the dogs there at night and i'm like you're gonna get taken by something <laughs> nope you not catch me on their train tracks day or night nope and when <laughs> whenever he's like the dogs were weird on a walk today i'm like were you at the train tracks <laughs> Go down there. They're trying to tell you something. <laughs> You're gonna get caught. Please. <laughs> Says the person who's doing this whole series on shit I know. <laughs> I know. But but it's because I know I've seen I've I was almost I drove through hell that one day. <laughs> you learned you did not because that was before you did the other ones, right? <laughs> Yeah. You didn't learn shit. You just got more comfortable with the idea of being uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I did. And I got home and I felt so silly. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> like, I was buying into that one. Yeah. That's a good one. The car, car. Yeah, that's that's definitely one where, like you said, like you start get to yourself about it because you're just especially because you're doing these alone. Like, yeah. I don't think like, well, and I tell you like back when I, back when I got my first cell phone not having service wasn't a big deal, but if that happened to me now, I'd be like, oh, I'm absolutely in hell. Like I've traveled <laughs> outside of the realm of the world that I existed in and I'm never going to be able to get back. Like, because there's, there's like so few places you, you can even get to, even in the country when phones didn't work initially, like you get service out there now. So it's like, yeah. it's really not as common as it used to be to lose service or to not have your phone work or whatever, I would lose my fucking mind. I would be like, I'm about to literally lose my life. This isn't happening. Like I'm about to die. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel kind of that way now when I don't have service, like just, yeah. Cause I get lost so easy. So oh, like no. if my GPS is gone, it's like, this could be, <laughs> done. This I could, could just get this lost. Day. <laughs> Yeah. Um, which is like one of the things, cause every, uh, I haven't done it for a while. I, I haven't done it since lockdown, but I used to fairly frequently make the like cross country drive from mm -hmm. like, uh, my East coast family to my West coast family. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was one of those things. There's this like dead spot in Utah that just like every time I was like, I'm going to die. They're going to find me like buried in the salt somewhere. <laughs> like, and I'm just going to be gone. <laughs> I'm gonna be nothing but bones oh. <laughs> buried in the salt that's funny utah of course like <laughs> and it's just like the whole and, and you know i'm on the inner state you know it's not like i feasibly yeah. could get lost but like i always would make sure driving it it's like i've got to get food right before so i don't have to make any stops in this dead zone because if i have to get back on the like inner state i'm gonna be fucking gone i'm gonna be lost yeah like yeah <laughs> You know, all I've been able to think about this entire conversation is that stupid book cover of the car. Yes. Like, I'm like miles. all I'm thinking is like, <laughs> that would be like super good for a story. That would be so good. 
Yeah, because it has like the shadowy thing, you know, you know why, because you've seen it. But it just, I was thinking about it as like when you were talking about like the silhouettes and the trees and the stuff in the back seat. And I'm like, oh, like, it's like <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Cool. That'd well, be good. That'd be really good. It would be. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I think that's it for this lesson of what not to do when yeah, you're driving. Yeah, don't do one. this one. <laughs> Or do it, I guess, if you want to get scared. And I, I do think that's another takeaway from this. Um, mm -hmm. That, like, kind of picking these apart and ordering where they've been. It's like, I think the solo ones, like, you get less results with them. Uh, because mm -hmm. you don't have, like... I feel like when you're playing with a group, there are yeah. other, like, witnesses to kind of, like, hype up weird experiences and tell you that you're yeah. not going crazy when you see weird stuff. But I That's feel cool. like the scarier experience is always the ones that you have to play by alone. yourself. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Because even now, even knowing that it was fake, even though, it, like. Yeah. Looking back and being like, I was yeah. just making myself out. I still remember how scared I got, like, right around mile two, where I was like, oh, no. Yeah yeah i um yeah i i think like that makes sense but you're all because like when you're like in theory in ghost theory um you know 101 it's like if you're alone you're more likely to experience something than you are in a group because you're alone your yeah. senses are heightened because you're alone which opens you up to more stuff you know because you're alone and so it, it just is supposed to be this like more vulnerable state of like that's when you feel things that's when you experience things it's because you're by yourself so it just yeah it, it makes sense yeah 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 cool well i think that's it for this episode of horror games in real life um we'll be back next month talking some more we've got several more right yeah yeah several several okay. <laughs> yeah so um yeah once again if you've not seen these there's a playlist now this will be the third episode um and yeah Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us on this episode of Horror Games in Real Life. Uh, hope you have a good rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you in the next one.